Jars and bottles clicked against each other as Cozy Glow floated back and forth from a book to the large cauldron-like pot in the middle of the table. Cozy read the recipe out loud as she held up each of the bottles. Three rose petals, a sprinkle of morning mist, dragon scale, cement, an ounce of amethyst. Well, one of those is going to be harder to obtain than the others. Morning mist, it's the middle of the afternoon! Cozy opened one of the jars on the table and got out a few dragon scales, sprinkling them on the boiling cauldron. The scales evaporated in a lavender mist once introduced, adding next a leaf bush of mint. Rogar sure has a weird collection of contents in these potion bottles. Like seriously, they're just sitting there collecting dust on the shelves. Good thing he has me around to put them to good use. With this, he and the others will have to see what good help I am. Whatever you're trying to preach in there, could you not? One of Cozy's roommates, Queen Chrysalis, entered the center room she was in, with a hoof against her temple. Some of us are trying to get their beauty nap. Well, trying is a good way to put that activity. Chrysalis wanted to hiss, but found she just didn't want to put up with it today. And just what are you doing so actively this late in the afternoon? She looked down to see all the bottles and jars that scattered the top of the table. A few contaminants tipped over to spill on the surface. Are you trying to set the layer on fire again? Your cooking limits stop at cupcakes, and I beg you that it stays like that. That was going to be a good stew if you and Tyrig hadn't been trying to take over the recipe with your own gross ingredients. I'll have you know that black beetles are a delicacy in the changeling diet. Yeah, almost as much as love is to ponies. Don't blame me for your lack of taste. Whatever. Anyway, I'm not cooking anything this time. I'm just trying to make a disorientated potion. A what? A disorientated potion. Child, that better not be what I think it is. Cozy lifted the book off the table to show the changeling queen. I found this book in one of those chests Grogar has just laying around. I flipped through it and discovered it was a potion book. Spells and potions of every kind! Where did you even get all these containers? They were just sitting in those shelves, Cozy said, pointing a hoof to the holes in the wall. Huh. Somehow I never noticed them. Well now they get to be put to use, for when we go and finally take Twilight and her friends down! And how do you plan to do that with all these... liquids? Cozy pointed a hoof at the page in the book. With this potion recipe, it's called a mare patio. Gazoontite. What? No! That's the name of the potion! Chrysalis squinted her eyes as she leaned in to read the page. A magical potion that makes anybody that drinks it become so focused and obsessed with somebody else, they lose sight of everything else around them. It makes them unable to carry out any other task from being so concentrated on that something else, so Twilight won't be able to use the elements of harmony or friendship or whatever laser of feelings she pulls out from her rear when we try to take over! A love potion. What? No! It's a mare potio! It's a mare potio, you fool. Not a mare. It means love potion. Cozy Glow flipped the book back to herself and reread it. Huh. Guess I should have thought of that from the little heart scribble at the bottom. And here I thought you were making something just as worse. What makes you think you can even whip up a spell like this out of nowhere? Applejack had a guest teacher once for one of her classes to come and show us about a different kind of magic. One you could make with leaves and liquids and slimes. Now that zebra mare knew how to create fireworks inside a classroom! Her constant rhyming got annoying halfway through the class, though. Chrysalis rolled her eyes. One class, and you're already creating this chaotic concoction right in the middle of our only refuge. Great. Our demise might come sooner than we first believed. Hey, I got this! Even if Grogar's bell does work for us, there's no harm in a backup plan. Speaking of that... T-Rex should be done overlooking that book we stole. I swear if that minotaur- Centaur. 
even plans to hide information from us from that book. I will. Drain him of his love? I was going to say, personally, drag his rear back to the depths of Tartarus, but that works much more efficient. That's... actually pretty soft. Even for you. Chrysalis's eyes went wide at the realization. Fine! I'll throw you in too! What? <laughs> A loud, content sigh rang across the lair as their third roommate walked into the center room stretching his fit, red muscles above his head. Now that was a workout. Is there anything left in the kitchen? I'm starved. Tyrek opened his eyes to stare at the scene before him, Chrysalis beside a floating cozy, the latter hovering above a cauldron with a bottle in her hooves. Ugh. On second thought, never mind. I'm not cooking! Cozy yelled, exasperated. Perfect! I get to live another day! Tyrek crossed his arms as he walked over to them, and peered into the boiling pot. Not that I care too much, but what are you even doing? About to finish my disorientating potion. Your what? A love potion. Chrysalis corrected. A what? I got everything except for the amethyst ounces. Cozy ignored him and continued with a smile. But it's just one ingredient. It shouldn't make a big difference, right? I thought you were the potion expert, Cozy. You would know better not to overdo it. Especially with something like a love potion. What do you mean? Changelings feed off love. Even fake love. We've had our encounters with prey that were under the effects of forced infatuation. It's like a drug. It makes changelings sick within hours of feeding. Huh. Cozy pondered. So all you have to do is not feed off of Twilight when I hit her with this. Good. That is not what I meant. I won't be robbed of the opportunity to drain every last ounce of life source from that self-important annoying pest of a pony. But that's not the point. Any love enchantment has to be handled delicately, as it is a very complex emotion. One mistake can turn it from a blissful taste into a sour mess. Understand? I think you should listen to her, Cozy. Tyrek intervened. Magic, even in potions, isn't to be taken lightly. We don't want to cause a mess before we even get the chance to master the bell! Speaking of which, have you finished reading that book? It's written in an old dead language. I'm deciphering it as fast as I can. Well, decipher it faster. I'm sick of waiting for that old goat's master plan. Well, I don't have any amethyst bits. Cozy looked around the table. What happened to patience being your greatest virtue, your majesty? You'd just better not be planning on withholding any secrets from it from us when you're done. You know what? That thought never crossed my mind. Until now. Cozy Glow lowered onto the table to reach a colorful jar, as Chrysalis got in T-Rex's face with a scowl. Don't you dare! I'll use this! Huh? Tyrek and Chrysalis said in unison. I don't have any amethyst bits. Rock candy cupcake sprinkles are the next big thing, right? Cozy, no! Within seconds, Cozy Glow dunked the jar of rock candy sprinkles, jar and all, into the cauldron. The explosive magenta reaction blew Cozy Glow off the air and into the muggy swamp water of the lair. Left behind were her two roommates, who unfortunately got caught in the widespreading mist fog of the mixture. Chrysalis hissed at the sparkling mist surrounding her like it was toxic, which, to a changeling, it basically was. Tyrek coughed and gagged upon the two sweet-tasting gas, holding his throat like it was choking him, which it probably was. The explosive smoke splayed out until it finally started to clear and disappear. 
Cozy Glow emerged from the water coughing, dragging herself to the edge and shaking herself dry. Okay, maybe Rock Candy was too sweet. <clears throat> I think just as sprinkles would have worked fine. She flew up onto the table to see the mess the explosion had left behind. All her ingredients were thrown around. A few broken bottles and drops of her mixture decorated the floor and surface. Uh, so, can either of you lend little me a hoof to clean? She asked into the faded mist. No response. Guys? Her two allies laid on either side of the center room, thrown on the ground in the aftermath of the commotion. They groaned as they tried to get up, a shared headache throbbing against their heads. They raised their sights to one another, and, from across the room, their eyes met, and their headaches disappeared. Chrysalis's green eyes widened as they met t glowing yellow pupils, a sparkle traveling across them as they met their stare. Cozy Glow landed in front of Chrysalis. Hey, you guys all right? Who's gonna help me clean up? Oh my. Well, aren't you a strapping handsome hunk? Huh? Cozy took a step back, not knowing if she should be disgusted or confused. Flying over to t she poked at his seemingly frozen stare. Hey! You're not gonna leave me to pick up all this by myself, are you? And what is a ravishing mare like yourself doing in a dumpy swamp like this? It wouldn't be a dump if you two could lend a hoof here before Grogar comes back! What has gotten into you two? No place is a dump if your strong, dashing self is here with it. Only if it's being accompanied by your radiant beauty. <laughs> Chrysalis giggled, too uncharacteristic for Cozy's liking, as she and Tirek embraced each other in a nuzzle, his beard brushing against her cheek as her wings buzzed excitingly behind her. Cozy Glow stood petrified at the scene happening before her, shooting glares back and forth from the two of them before finally finding her words. What the hell is going on? Her outburst got their attention, as they finally tore their stares from one another and towards the filly. Oh, look at her, dear ex. She's adorable. Indeed she is, my dear. Our family wouldn't be as complete without our child to symbolize our love. Family? Cozy's yelling got interrupted as she was lifted up by Chrysalis's magic and placed between Chrysalis and Tirek. Hey! Just look at her! Doesn't she just look like a part of us? Chrysalis said in a dreamy tone. Her blue mane being a lighter shade of your beautiful teal hair. Tirek added, the same obnoxious tone in his voice. And her pink coat is a variant of your bold, glowing skin. Those are complete coincidences! What are you two- Cozy squirmed, but her voice cut off once she looked down at the cauldron. The pink mist floated off of it as it stirred inside. The potion! You two were caught in the middle of it! You must have gotten affected by it! You're both under the love potion's effects! But then, why aren't I? If this is a love spell, I don't ever want to wake up. <laughs> Chrysalis giggled. Cozy Glow held back a gag. Even if it wasn't a spell, it's impossible that I wouldn't have fallen for you and your gorgeous eyes. t continued. I highly doubt that. Cozy muttered now beginning to be smothered by the two ancient beings that couldn't keep their eyes off of each other. Get off me! Pulling herself off of them, she floated back to the table, flipping through the pages of her book vigorously. There's got to be a way to undo this. Maybe a nullifying potion or something to reverse it? Maybe if I add the opposite of the ingredients from the recipe, I can... She turned around to find she was alone in the center room. Where did they go?
an hour of flying around the lair and the surrounding swamp area later. Cozy found T-Rex outside in the woods scavenging for... something. The pony flew up to him in a frustrated frenzy. T-Rex! Cozy, there you are! I've been looking all over for you! What are you doing? Tyrek turned to show her the dried-up weeds and flowers of his scavenging. Why, I'm gathering to make a splendid bouquet arrangement for my beloved! Would you like to help me? No. It's weird seeing you out here picking flowers when we should be planning our next step for taking over Equestria. You know, the thing we've been planning for all these months. Ah, yes, that. Don't you worry, dear daughter. We'll take over this Equestria for you, and while you're happy with it, we can rule it together. You, Chrysalis, and I, as a family. I'm not your daughter. You're like a thousand years older than me. A thousand six hundred, dear. And stop calling me that. Once I get that nullifying potion down, I'm going to drown you both in it so this horrible display of affection between you two never happens again. That's nice, dear. Now, do you think Chrysalis would like a bouquet of just black flowers? Or are dried dead arrangements more to her liking? Cozy Glow decided not to answer and stormed off to look for her other love-struck roommate. Another half hour of flying, and Cozy found the Changeling Queen a bit farther away. Chrysalis! Oh! Oh, Cozy, you frightened me. I frightened you? You threatened to tear my head off every time I walk into your room without knocking, and a simple Chrysalis is enough to scare you? Well, you see, child, I'm in the middle of a little hunting. Hunting... chickens? Of course. The kitchen back home our rather lazy leader, Grogar, put together doesn't have the sufficient ingredients for a proper diet for our growing family. Ingredients? So you mean you're going to... Ugh. Oh, gross! I'm a pony! I don't eat meat! Not you, dear. Your father. My father? What are you... Ugh. Cozy groaned. A loud, irritated groan to the heavens that almost shook the chickens below. Tyrek is not my father! That's just so... gross! If anything, he's more like my great-great-great-grandfather! And besides, he's a centaur. He doesn't eat meat. Does he? Well, of course he does. He's mostly mammal, but he does need the protein and iron if he wants to build up that bulging, hefty form of his. <laughs> Chrysalis blushed with a muffled giggle as she fanned herself with a hold hoof. I beg you not to start drooling. Oh, Cozy. I know you're just a child and wouldn't comprehend the love and admiration two adults can have for each other at your age. Pardon me, your highness, but I nearly absorbed all the magic from Equestria single-hoofed! I think I'm more than capable of understanding love, even one as disgusting and sickening as this one. Just yesterday, you and Tyrk almost fought each other over whose turn it was to wash the dishes. We almost had no dishes, you two were about to throw them at each other. A lover's quarrel, perhaps. It comes when building a family. It took every ounce of willpower in Cozy Glow not to dig her head in the ground, ostrich-style, and scream. We are not a family! We are nothing like a family! I'm a pony, you're a crazy changeling on the verge of insanity, and t a millennial old centaur who has more beef than brains, even when he reaches the size of a goddamn building! Yeah, he does. Ah! Cozy flailed her short little forelegs into the air and flew back to the lair. <laughs> 
understandably frustrated, Cozy stormed into her room and slammed the door shut behind her. What in the seven layers of Tartarus did I do to deserve this nauseating outcome of events? Draining the magic source of an entire country would be a good start. Those two wouldn't shut up about Deary this and love that and daughter the other, Cozy lamented. And so much on this family. We're not even the same species. Those two haven't ever treated me like a child until now. At least I was on equal footing with them before, but this... Not only is this intolerable, this is downright disrespectful! She flew up to her bed, pushing a beaten and battered homemade starlight plushie onto the floor. I don't need this. I don't need those two acting like parents towards me. She slumped down on her pillow, letting the words ghost echo in the room. When she realized what she said and opened her eyes. I mean... Cozy shook her head and slumped back down. No, absolutely don't need them. Especially not when they're all soft and weak and gross like this. Oh, let this be over by morning. Hopefully that potion spell will wear off by then, and we can go back to what's really important. Defeating Twilight and the princesses and ruling over Equestria until the ends of time. With that happy thought in mind, she yawned and laid back down to sleep. The next morning, Cozy took her usual morning routine of spending an hour in the bathroom fixing her bouncy curls and ribbons on her mane and tail, then flapped her tiny wings towards the kitchen. A quick sniff of the air sparked her interest as she floated midair, slowly recognizing the sweet smell as she drew closer. That smells like <gasps> pancake! Her confused yet happy tone instantly drained from her when she took the turn to the kitchen and saw the horrifying scene before her. Chrysalis stood over the stove, her magic holding up a pan as she flipped a pancake in the air. She was wearing a frilly pink apron. Ah! Chrysalis? What are you wearing? Chrysalis turned to her, not at all returning the upset tone, but rather a chirpy one of her own. Oh, good morning, Cozy. Care for some breakfast? It's not even 9 a.m. and I already lost my appetite for the whole day. Cozy muttered, going completely ignored by the apron-wearing changeling. Why don't you sit at the table? The batch will be done soon. Batch? In the weeks of us living together, you've never even considered cooking for us. Cozy lazily looked over at the table to spot a glass filled with orange liquid. Flying towards it, she came to see the whole table was set with three settings. A maple bottle in the middle, along with the whole jug of the orange liquid. She took the glass and sniffed it. A quick sip making her light up. Apple juice? Of course. You ponies are quite fond of it, right? Well, yeah, but- Ooh, are those pancakes I smell? A booming voice rang through the kitchen soon revealing itself as Tirek, as he walked in with a hand behind his back. Indeed, Chrysalis cooed. Are they to your liking? Not as much as I like waking up to see you in such a revealing and tempting outfit, my dear. Cozy spit out her drink, almost choking on it as the two adults ignored her, tranced in each other's gaze once more. I'll consider wearing it more often, if that's the case. Tirek brought an arm to wrap around her midsection, pulling her close as he nuzzled at her cheek. I wouldn't mind that at all. Honey, <laughs> the child. Tirek then brought his other arm forward to reveal a bouquet of dried up weeds and a lopsided flower or two. These are for you, love. Oh, darling, you shouldn't have. The rough, dried edges reminded me of your hold punctured hooves. 
and how much I love to hold them. Darling, I don't know what to say. I do. Cozy intervened in her own space, her head dead against the table. Ground, eat me now! Perhaps telling me what smells so delicious? T-Rex continued. Well, aside from you... Cozy rose her head up to stare at her ex-mentor with a face of repulsion. Mouthing would appear to say, What the buck? Well, now that you've given me such a lovely gift, I can give you one in return. Chrysalis lit up her horn as she took a tray from the kitchen counter to show him. <gasps> Are those? Chicken bits. Cozy's face contorted as she averted herself to the side, a hoof holding her stomach with the other over her mouth. Aw, oh, you spoil me, my love. My pleasure, dear. Now come, let's sit for a lovely breakfast together before these pancakes get cold. The clink of the plate setting on the middle of the table got the pink filly's attention as she looked up to see the towering pile of pancakes staring down at her. Hopefully she could at least enjoy a good decent breakfast for the first time in a while without having to- Oh, god damn it. The pancake she slipped down to her plate revealed itself to have been molded in the shape of a heart. Because, of course it was. Bearing through it, she jabbed her fork into it and bit into a piece of the flat cake. It was, surprisingly, really good. Perfectly cooked on both sides, thick and sweet. Was Chrysalis always this good at cooking? Maybe this side of her wasn't so bad. As soon as the thought crossed her mind, the sound of giggling brought her attention up to see Tyrek and Chrysalis feeding each other bits of food with their respective utensils. Tyrek held up his fork as he placed a slice of pancake gently into Chrysalis's mouth. Likewise, a magic engulfed fork with a chicken bit floated up to his mouth as both utensils moved aside to make way for the two to gaze into each other's eyes as they chewed, a muffled, dreamy sigh emitting from both of them. The tray of bits sat invitingly at the center of the table. Yet all Cozy wanted to do was hurl. Cozy took the rest of the morning and afternoon looking through the book, hoping to find something to reverse the curse she had embedded on her two roommates. With Grogar gone for weeks at a time, she could take up the table his crystal ball would normally sit at for her reading. Sitting on top of said table, she flipped through the pages, reading the rest of the potion recipe names and their effects. Disorientating potion? Infatuating spell my flank. She vigorously gave another flip of the pages and continued reading. With an eyebrow raise, she looked up to see a crow flying across the air to one side of the lair. Shrugging her shoulders, she went back to reading. Returning her stare up, another crow flew to the opposite side of the lair. Okay, this was getting suspicious. Walking over to the edge of the table, Cozy leaned in as much as she could to see the opposite sides of the lair. On one side, she saw Chrysalis suspended in the air, resting on a hammock made from her changeling webbing like a half-cocoon. She was swaying mildly from side to side as her face rested on a hoof, looking with narrowed eyes at the opposite side of the room. Facing the other side, Cozy could see Tyrek sitting on one of his workbenches, he was mindlessly flexing on a single dumbbell with one arm, while the other arm rested under his chin as he gazed dreamily to the far opposite side of the room, until a crow landed next to him with a piece of paper tied around its neck. Cozy raised an eyebrow as Tyrek carefully took the note, speed reading through it as a goofy smile formed on his expression. He took out a quill and wrote something on the paper, wrapping it up once more to clip back onto the bird. 
the bird took to the air and traveled to Chrysalis, landing on her web hammock as she took the note with her magic. She giggled at the apparently funny contents and took out a quill of her own, writing something as well with her magic before clipping it back to the bird and going back to gazing at the object of her affection. The crow traveled back and forth between the two. Cozy tried her dang best to ignore the constant call of the bird, the irritation boiling up inside the ten-pound body of the child before she grabbed the nearest jar and flung it at the bird as it passed by. It of course dodged it, and the jar fell into the swampy water below. What Cozy didn't see was the black mist that emerged from the water once the content sank. Huffing out a groan, she took the book and went to lock herself in her room. The loud crashing was hard to ignore, even behind a closed door. Cozy Glow shook herself up from her book and flew out the door to the source of the collision. The kitchen lights were on. Great. Cozy walked in and immediately stopped her trotting when she saw the mess of ingredients and pans scattered all over the room. If some pony would have told her that a tornado decided to pass through this specific room and nowhere else, she would have believed them. What the hell happened here? Her outburst went completely ignored by the couple in the room, who laid on top of the table, gazing into each other's eyes as they mindlessly tried feeding each other cupcakes with childish giggling and muttering. Frosting and other sprinkles decorated their fur and manes. Not that they minded, or even seemed to notice. Tira covered a cupcake next to Chrysalis's mouth, but instead of feeding it to her, he smeared it playfully against her cheek, earning him a cooing chirp. In turn, Chrysalis levitated a cupcake up to his face, only to spread part of its frosting against his chin. When Tirek couldn't reach it with his tongue, Chrysalis brought a hoof up to wipe it off and licked it from her hoof, her half-lidded expression never parting from his gaze. Oh, sure! My cooking is literally to die for, but you guys can't even bake a single pastry without destroying the kitchen! There is still edible food here! A sweet for my sweet! Tirek cooed in his rough, raspy voice that only seemed to mesmerize the changeling next to him as he brought up a cookie to her. Sweet, what I hope to give you soon! Chrysalis responded back as she took the cookie in her mouth. She kept it there with a soft hum, mm. locking eyes with her centaur lover. Cozy Glow internally screamed and stormed off to look for something to gouge her eyes and hopefully ears out. The swamp was quiet in the late evening, only soft crickets chirping away and the occasional crow crying out into the night. It was dark and gloomy, just the way Cozy liked it. After a long, exhausting day, some peace and quiet was all she needed. She spoke way too soon. The booming sound of a double bass playing an upbeat jazzy tune interrupted the peace and quiet of the night as the pony's eyes shot wide open. Please, no. Outside the skirts of Grogar's lair, a star-struck centaur jammed away at a cello double bass, an equally star-struck changeling queen resting her body on a railing edge of the outside lair's structure as she watched his performance. Her eyes faintly narrowed, mesmerized by her lover's serenade played specifically for her. 
his deep, raspy voice proving not to be an obstacle for either of them as he continued to sing his bewitched heart out. The booming beats of the cello's strings echoed through the lair. Unfortunately for the resident, the serenade performed right outside Cozy's room. Cozy stared daggers at the ceiling, questioning how her life got to this moment, and slammed her hooves on the bed as she sat up. Fluttering her wings towards the window, she got a clear view of the couple's late-night activity. Chrysalis was resting her cheek against her hoof, while Tirek continued to slay it on the wooden bass instrument. Where he even got the string contraption from was beyond her. Cozy Glow gagged into her hoof at the musical display of affection, flying back to her bed with her hooves firmly against her ears. She glared at the outside, cursing the mere existence of the window in her room, before giving in to her agony and resorting to stuffing her pillow over her head. Just as she did, the beating of the double bass amplified as it reached its unfortunate solo. The momentum of the jazzy beat shook the filly's room as it jerked her small body away from the safety of her bed and onto the ground. Deciding enough was enough, she huffed and took to the air towards the kitchen. Outside, Chrysalis sighed dreamily, staring down at the creature she shared her cursed enchantment with as Cozy reappeared on the roof of the lair with a pie in her hoof the last remaining edible of the mess the two beneath her had created. Before the centaur could begin his second verse, Cozy dunked the pie down with a growl, landing it directly onto t face and cutting off his melodious singing. t shook off the cream-filled pastry, looking around confused for a second before catching his beloved still sitting in place for him. He smiled, and took a breath to start off that awaited second verse. He would keep his audience waiting as a second item came slamming down onto his head, this time in the form of a toaster. Seemingly knocked out, Chrysalis flew down towards t body with a worried hoof to her cheek. Cozy Glow was too tired to give two hoots and just flew back inside to sleep, thankful any future performance was canceled. Cozy did herself her own favor by getting up early and making breakfast before her two love-struck roommates did, and ruined it for her again. Immediately after, she went back to reading the potion book, more eager than ever to look for an undo spell somewhere. A potion, a spell, anything to relieve her of this nightmare. This looks like an interesting book, she said. Oh look, spells in the form of easy potions, she said. Oh look, a disorientating spell that will surely help us take down that purple prissy pony much easier with no repercussions. Cozy, why couldn't you have just tried that new recipe of spiked cupcakes and called it a day? Ugh! Cozy let out an exasperated huff and slammed her hooves down on the book. As tempting as the new sleeping coma and enhanced wing potion spell she found looked, she needed to take care of her current situation at hoof first. This is getting bad. If I'm not able to find something here, I might be forced to go into Counterlot again to find something else there. But with Tyrick and Chrysalis in the state they're in, there's absolutely no way we'll be able to successfully sneak in again. If anything, I think with the higher risk of getting caught in the heat of the moment, those two might think of... Ugh, no! She shook her head to get the repulsive thought out of her mind. On the bright side, at least Grovar isn't here to see the mess both of them in the lair has become. To see the what? Cozy Glow jumped at the booming voice that echoed throughout the caves. Wheeling towards the entrance, her pupils dilated at seeing the blue goat known as Grogar in front of her face with a less than friendly scowl. Uh, how much? 
much of that did you hear? Enough to know that you three have been doing something behind my back. Cozy tried to calm her beating heart and put up her innocent facade. Behind your back? Psh, no, of course not. We've just been doing a, a few team exercises that may have gotten a little out of hoof. And just what kind of exercises did those include? Because the kitchen is stained everywhere of I don't know how many substances. There's a broken cello in the front. And dried up wheat are scattered absolutely everywhere. Cozy looked down at the lair's floor. Huh. I completely missed those. Grogar's snort brought her attention back. Well, I can assure you there's a perfectly good explanation for all of them. <laughs> Before she could give her perfect explanation, a pair of giggling voices echoed from the hallway and walked together into the center room, claw in hoof, staring at one another. Their lively muttering was inaudible as they nonchalantly passed by them and headed for the exit. Uh, just where are you two going? Grogar's voice boomed. Grogar, you're finally back! Chrysalis chirped. My beloved here and I are going out for a relaxing walk in the woods! t -Rex shared to them. And after that, back home for a romantic dinner. We hope you don't mind. I do mind! Grogar stomped his hoof on the ground. You two think you have permission to just walk around in plain sight, risking being seen by some pony? His tone was harsh and threatening. But alas, the pair did not pay him any attention. The second their eyes met again, all further focus was shifted on one another once more. One could practically see the hearts floating above their heads as they walked out. Hey, I haven't just missed you two! When it became clear that they wouldn't budge, Grogar turned back to glare at the filly. Cozy Glow gave a nervous chuckle as she tried to maintain eye contact. What happened? Well, you see, I was doing some exploring earlier the other day, and I... Uh... Before Cozy could finish, Grogar had already looked behind her and saw his potion book laying open on the table. He snorted as he slammed a hoof against the surface, making the book jump. You used my enchantment guide? Enchantment guide? Uh, oh, that old thing. I don't even know what that is. It was already there. A sharp look from the goat jolted Cozy as she finally confessed. All right, fine. I tried creating a potion from one of the recipes written in there and somehow that happened. She extended a hoof to the exit. Which recipe did you follow? Cozy frantically flew to the table and pointed at a page. This one, a disorientating potion. You fool, that's about a potion. It's a- A rough potion, I know. I may or may not have used an incorrect ingredient or two, and now I'm stuck with that mess! Both hooves splayed frustratedly at the exit passage. Seriously, the mere thought of Chrysalis and Tyr getting together is gross enough as it is! But when they have to act so lovey and dovey and weak and gross like that, it's a annoying! Especially when they try and drag me into their sick family fantasies! Have you tried looking for a reversal chemical? I have been trying to do that for the past two days! But this book gives me no other recipes for it! You child, to reverse a potion's effect, there's no other secondary recipe to undo it! What? Every potion spell can be undone if you only modify the original recipe. You mean I just have to do it again? No, you have to add another extra ingredient that nullifies the original outcomes. Did all three of you drink that potion? Uh, actually, it kind of exploded when I added the last ingredient. Jerk and Chrysalis got caught up in the explosion's gas while I was thrown in the swamp water. 
When I got out, I wasn't affected by the gas at all. The muddy swamp water must have prevented me from getting all lovey-dovey because it was so dirty and tainted. Unlike the clean and pure recipe from the love potion. That's it! There, it only took you two entire days to figure it out. Hey, I think I would have gotten it quicker had it not been for those two going around being all mushy and obnoxious all the- Call me the nullify spell! Grogar commanded with another stomp. With a jolt, Cozy Glow scurried away. Yeah.